Hi all. In this lecture, we will be importing our customer data model into our Simaki instance and we'll explore all the components that have been configured in this model. So I have logged in into my Simaki instance. I'll click on Application Builder and then New Model from Import. Now we'll head to the location where we have downloaded XTM uh, tutorial resources. So it's in my downloads. And then we'll go to the demo applications, customer B2C, model, and then we'll import this XML document. We'll click on finish and that should take us to the customer data model that we have imported. So here, we'll go through all these components at a high level that what has been configured specifically for customer B2C implementation. So the first section talks about the diagram, which is uh, the data model, the visual representation of the data model that we have already seen. So here we can see we have got the entities, the relationships, which one are mandatory, which one are not mandatory, which is a complex type, here addresses a complex type, and you can actually make it you know, full screen, you can have different configurations, like you can have name, label, label only, name only, you can shrink it, you can expand it, and all those kind of things. So we'll cancel this. Next is the entity section. So this is where we have defined all our five entities specific to customer B2C. So the sign here, X equals to Y, uh, next to communication channel preference and person indicates that these are the fuzzy entities and the other one nickname person product and product are basic entities so if we open the customer channel preferences here we can see that it's a fuzzy entity because say the entity type fuzzy matched we have got the historization enabled which means historize golden records and historize master records they have been checked if we go to the display cards, we have got one display card and there's a condition which has been defined where um, if communication type is email, then you use the cleansed email from person table. If it's phone, then you use the standardized phone and otherwise you use the person address. And if nothing matches, then you just return the first name in the display card. So, Next would be the attributes. This tells us how many attributes have been defined for this specific entity. There are no unique keys defined. There are no validations and no enrichers. And as the fuzzy entity, we have got one matcher or one match condition defined. So if we open that match condition here, we can see there's only one condition which is going to give 100% match. So if we open this matching condition, we can see it says that if record one um, golden ID is equal to the record to golden ID and their communication types are also equal, then it will return 100% match. So if we go back, then we are not using transitive matching or multi iteration grouping. And if the records match uh, above 99, then they will auto merge. So we'll go back to the communication channel preferences entity. Then we talk about the survivorship rules. There's one default rule which has been set and is valid for all the attributes that we have in that entity. And the consolidation strategy is preferred publisher, which means it's the survivorship will be depending on these publishers basically. So it goes from top to bottom. Here we have got marketing taking precedence over CRM and CRM taking precedence over ERP. Then we have got the collection. We have got standard collections defined. We have got forms. There are no search forms. There would be a stepper, duplicate manager, action sets, business views, etc. So next we'll go to the nickname. And here also we have got display cards, attributes. And I guess there are no unique keys validations or enrichers because this is a basic entity. So no survivorship rules, there should be a collection and form. And then we will also have the standard application components like stepper and action sets, business views, etc. Next, this is our 
person or customer entity. Now here we will have display cards again, and I guess the display card of this would be um, concatenation of first name, last name in the primary text or first line, and the second line it would be whatever is present first, like email or phone or address. Then we have got the attributes defined here. We don't have any unique keys. For validations, it checks for invalid email. If the domain is not valid, then it will not process the record itself. So if we go back and so we have done the validation and enrichers here we are having enrichers for first name, uh, for last name. Uh, we are also doing a lookup to the nickname entity because that's what we discussed in our data model that there will be a lookup um, on given name in the in the nickname entity and the input going from person entity would be the normalized first name or first name in case this is blank. And the other enrichers would be filling in unknown nicknames. You have to normalize the address. If you normalize the address, we are doing it with city, state, and street. So there are some conditions for that. Uh, it will depend on your address uh, data quality once you do that uh, discovery with your source data. And the other enrichers are email and phone, and I guess there are enrichers used for that. So Simaki email enricher is being used here to cleanse the email as well as phone. So going back to person, next would be matcher. And again, there are multiple match conditions and it always starts with exact match and then it loosens out a bit. So we start with exact 100% match conditions and then we loosen out like 98, 96, 94, 78, 68. And we go more and more fuzzy, um, expanding that uh, size where the records can fit in. Uh, if you open up one of the conditions to just quickly check. So let's check a fuzzy one. Um, here, if we are checking the conditions, we can see the first name should match with the first name, nickname should match with nickname. Uh, they are based on all conditions basically. Um, or the normalized first name, nickname, and the last name has to match anyway. So there's an option, like any of these should match in first name and the last name should always match. And the date of birth and cleanse email should match. Then this would give 98% match score. Um, let's check if there's any fuzzy entity. So here we can see the similar last name address. This should be a fuzzy match rule. So if we open that, here we can see we have got sim edit distance similarity. Um, so you can come to matching and open the matching functions which are available in Simaki. And here we are using this. There's a decent description at the bottom which tells you what this method does. So we'll cancel this and we'll go back to the matcher. And here we can see we are using transitive and multiple multi-iteration grouping. These are the merge policies defined. You can hover over to any of this and you read the description of what it is doing. This is saying that if um, the golden records match 95% or above, then they will be auto-merged. So we'll go back to person and then we'll click on survivorship. Now, based on different attributes, you can have different survivorship rules. For example, we have got one for address components and here we are saying ERP will take precedence over marketing, marketing will take precedence over CRM because the consolidation strategy is preferred publisher. There are a few others if you want. Can choose from those and we are not considering nulls at all and if we go back to the survivorship we can see we have got a different rule for name we have got a different rule for phone so you can do it uh, either in one single rule if you know or if you trust one system more than the other uh, or you can split it per attribute as well just like we have done here then there are a few collections available or built for this customer data model it would be based on needs. Few of them would be golden. Some of them could be master records, um, collection views, etc. We have got few forms as well. Then we have got one search form as well defined. We have got steppers, duplicate managers. There are two. One is for confirm matches. Another one is for review suggestions. We have got multiple action sets, business views, 
etc next would be person product so again this is a basic entity um, i won't go in every component of this but we have we should be having all the standard application components defined for this and similar would be valid for product as well it's a basic entity so you wouldn't have your matcher survivorships um, or duplicate managers etc defined for this entity as well so this covers our entity section next would be reference relationship these are basically the links between your entities we have already seen this in our customer b2c diagram so here we can see we have got three links and these are the three links that has been defined we do not have any workflow defined for customer because that also doesn't make sense that why would you have a, a workflow to onboard a customer complex type is for address because here we can see uh, c icon uh, just before the address and this indicates it's a custom it's a complex type which means there are multiple attributes uh, grouped into this complex type so here we can see we have got all these attributes defined in this complex type we have also got some list of values, which is your reference data, and there's only selected value which you can choose for these attributes um, or fields that we have defined in our data model. There's a default uh, customer B2C application, which once we deploy the data model, we will be able to see which all functionalities have been enabled with customer B2C. So if I open that and go to the folders and actions, here we can see we can import the source data that we have discussed before. We can also browse the data and we can also see the errors if there are any while importing the data. So there are different views configured for your um, error scenarios per entity as well. You can have quick actions uh, where you can confirm the matched records. You can go through the suggested matches from Simaki or you can import master's update person. You can basically update the existing customers as well. And then we have got the dashboard here. Next section is your publishers, where we talk about which all source system will be providing data to this data model. We have got CRM, ERP, and marketing. We don't have any database views. We have got one named queries, which is saying person with products communication preferences. And then we don't have any enricher caches, model variables, database functions, retention policies. And then we also have model privileges grants. So Simaki admin is by default, which has all the access to this data model. And the next one is data steward, which has been, uh, which has been providing this data model, but we have to create it in the configuration section of Simaki. That's why it says cross because this role doesn't exist in the Simaki configuration itself, but it has got the privileges um, on this data model. Um, it's, it has got the full access to the data model. So this is how our customer B2C data model looks like. I'll see you in next one. Thank you.